Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Recipe Wednesday. Today I'm going to show you how to make keto flatbread. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. This is in the form of a grilled cheese with carnitas and this is in cracker format. So stay tuned. So in my little pot here, I've got two tablespoons of butter and 60 grams or a quarter cup of full fat sour cream. And I'm going to add in 12 ounces of shredded mozzarella. This is the whole milk mozzarella. There is a difference too. I had to look it up. Part skim uh, is crispier, whole milk melts better. I was trying to mix them for a while, like the, um, so I'd have like half part skim, half whole milk, and it actually, I didn't like the texture. So to me, I, my, I prefer whole milk. Although, you know, I wonder if part skim would work pretty good in this. Anyway, I'm going to put this over a medium low heat and get the rest of my ingredients measured out. So in a large bowl, I have 60 grams or half a cup of coconut flour. To that, I'm going to add two teaspoons baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and this is a scoop of collagen. This is a bit of an experiment because normally I add xanthan gum, but I don't think, I'm not sure about xanthan gum and diabetes. Like, I know it doesn't cause other diabetics a problem, but for my mom, we're not sure if it's spiking her blood sugar just a little bit over 140. So like um, she got like 150. So we're going to try it with the collagen today and see what happens. Oh, and you know, you've got the cheese going on the stove. Keep checking that every once in a while and giving it a stir. You could do this in the microwave, but I'm always worried that I'm going to overcook it in the microwave. So that's why I like to do it stovetop because I feel like I have more control. And this does take a few minutes. Have some patience. Getting there. It's looking pretty good. Almost ready. You can see it's starting to get like, um, oh, can you see? Yeah, it's starting to get stretchy and stringy. So almost there. I keep saying that almost there. Maybe that doesn't mean what I think it means. All right. I think we are ready to go. It is very wet. You see that? That's, that's okay. Do not be afraid of that. But yeah, I think this is melty enough. The key is, the thing is, I don't want to let it get much further past this because it'll start to tighten up and then it'll be too hard to work with. So, cheese. All right, here we go. And this goes. I'm going to start stirring it just a little bit. And then I'm going to add in two eggs. And now I want to work fast. I don't really want the eggs to cook. I want to all mix together. And that looks perfect. I want to make sure there's no globby streaks of the egg white and no pockets of yellow for the egg yolk, but I think that's good. All right, let me show you what's next. I'm going to take half the dough, approximately half. And roll it out as flat as I can get it. And that is pretty thin. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. I could clean it up some. I think that's what I'm going to do because I it makes it just... If it's more of a square shape, it makes it easier when I go to cut it later. So I'm going to just kind of straighten it up a bit. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it bake at 350 for about 15 minutes. So I just wanna show you, I did roll out the other half and I'm keeping it covered um, just until it's time to put it in the oven. That was 15 minutes. This is as far as I want this to go. I'm gonna, oh no. Well, I'm gonna try to peel it off of here and then bake the other batch. I'm gonna put this on a cooling rack and let it cool. At this point, you could um, put pizza toppings on it and use it for a super thin pizza crust if you want. It does, you're able to like pick it up and hold it. For the sake of full disclosure, this is sticking. It normally doesn't when I use the um, xanthan gum. So this is a bit different than normal. Maybe next time I will uh, grease it up. I mean, it will come off, but you know, it's kind of annoying to me. Et voila, perfect and rustic. So yeah, okay, back to work. So I just wanna make a point too, it's not really cooked all the way through at this point. I mean, you can kind of see around the edges that it's brown. Um, and I mean, it's not that it's not safe to eat. You could eat this like this, but I have other plans. So I'm going to let this cool completely and then I'll show you what I want to make out of it. All right, it has cooled completely. Time to cut it. I think I'm going to do this part in thirds. Don't judge my cutting skills. Kind of bigger pieces than I wanted. There, uh, perfection. Um, most of these are going to go into the freezer and then um, I'll put a few in the fridge, but yeah, freezer is the best place for me to keep them and then we just take them out as we need them. And now I'm gonna show you what I wanna make with it. For my first application, I'm gonna make a grilled cheese. I like to put the butter in the pan first and then I'm going to actually add, um, this is some, uh, it's a cheese blend. As far as I know, this doesn't have anything in it but cheese. Uh, there's no other ingredients on it except cheese. I have been trying to stay away from the pre-shredded stuff. I'm not judging anyone else for using it. This is just for me and my family. So I'm gonna put down some of this first on a piece of the flatbread, then add some carnitas and then a little more cheese and then the top, so. I'm actually gonna put the dryer side inside. This was, this, this was the top side up and then this was the bottom. So I'm gonna put this like that. <clears throat> Little bit of cheese. This is so fiddly. To use my fingers. Now I gotta wash my hands. Let's see how this goes. Should be fine. Should be fine. I'm actually gonna put a lid on it just to trap the heat a little better so that everything gets heated through. Oh, but cheese is getting crispy. Oh, it looks like underneath. Probably not ready yet. It's not ready yet. I can feel it. Let's push that down. Get to see if I can get the cheese back in there. Now let's see if I can flip it. Ooh, that's a, that's a pretty brown. May have gone too far. I don't know, it's not burnt. Let's go a little bit shorter with this side. And I'm calling it, that's it. So here I cut a few pieces up, gonna let them just brown a little bit on each side and make them into something kind of like crackers. 
perfect. So a while ago, I had made this for my husband and left it like this. And he was going to, his idea was to use it for like a bread replacement and he didn't like it. So I, I just want to taste it and see what he was talking about. I mean, it doesn't taste bad. It's just, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't taste finished. <laughs> so I can try one of the crackers. They have a little bit of a snap to them. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. Let them get a little bit more crunchy, maybe. Yeah. That's good. My daughter likes to have these with um, some sour cream. That's a snack for her. But now, oh my goodness, I've been waiting for this one. Oh my word. <laughs> Okay, you don't have to do carnitas, but uh, why would you not? That's amazing. Mm. The only thing I would change is have maybe a little bit of um, sour cream on the side to dip. I'm sorry, I'm chewing right next to the microphone because I really want you guys to hear how crispy it is. Especially this part. It's not burnt. I know it's pretty dark, but it's not burnt. Mmm. Okay, that's good. I like that. Mm -mm -mm. That's all for me today. Um, I'm going to go finish this off. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.